Hey everybody, this is Kurt Zepatel from AstroQuest One. Uh, today I want to talk to you about the Pegasus Pocket Power Box. I first heard about this last year from Trevor Jones from AstroBackyard.com and he was describing it and it sounded pretty cool, but I still didn't quite understand how it was going to benefit me. Everything I had was working perfectly. I, you know, I have a sit in my astronomy shed and so I was wondering what's this going to do for me? It wasn't until I watched another video by Roswell Astronomy and what he said, he was describing his use out of it and he described how it turned his whole mount and everything and his whole telescope and all his whole setup into DC. And then suddenly, voila, it made so, so much sense of what it does. So what do I mean by making my whole thing DC? Well, take a look at all these wires here. These are all the attachments that the Pegasus power box got rid of basically in effect because I don't need any of these things. Uh, none of these uh, uh, adapters, none of these um, uh, AC DC converters because everything on your telescope uh, is run on DC current. Okay so yeah everything everything on your telescope all the, um, well, I can't see any of that down here, your auto guider and your uh, camera and what have you, your whole telescope it's all run on DC. Uh, they even though if you're at your house, you have it plugged in. What you have is you had all those other adapters there to convert it to uh, from AC to DC. Anyways, they had other things other than this prior to the Pegasus power box, which has those those Anderson power poles and stuff like that, and a rig runner. Well, we would do the same thing. However, I wasn't too keen on uh, cutting up these very expensive wires and splicing these power poles. Plus, the, that whole system is pretty expensive in and in itself. So this thing just took care of all that. All right. There's various ways to connect this thing up. You could just put this thing, attach it to the your telescope. You can attach it down below. You can do all sorts of things. What I did was I made a, a plate, or I ordered an aluminum plate right here from Amazon.com, and it was a 12 by 12 inch plate, and it's quarter inch thick, and I cut it down to seven inches by eight inches, so it's it's a plate, and what I did with this uh, plate is I've got it screwed into the uh, bracket, the cradle bracket, okay, like so. And I have the um, the power box just velcroed onto it. Well, what that did was when I had my auto guider, my auto guider used to be mounted right here. Uh, that would have interfered with it. So I detached that, and I ordered some some new rings. And I have the my auto guider uh, mounted right to that aluminum plate, right in the center. So it's actually a better uh, better connection for auto guiding since it's in the center. I put my finder scope which used to be down here I attached that to this aluminum plate okay and I have a, a USB hub that I also have attached to it. Now this USB hub is different than my original USB hub. This is the StarTech and I highly recommend this for a couple of reasons which I'll go over to in a second. Okay, one thing I can say, this StarTech auto guiding, um, the StarTech uh, USB hub, it's full metal and it's encased and it comes with a little holder bracket, a metal holder bracket. And I've got a, I bought another piece of uh, angled aluminum so I can mount it sideways like this so the connections don't interfere with the, uh, with the finder scope. And the other thing I just wanted to mention is um, these bolts that hold into the cradle, uh, it's kind of interesting. They're all six millimeter metric. They're, so they're the metric six millimeter bolts. And I think that's standard on most telescope cradles, if I'm not mistaken. But most of the other apparatus stuff that connects up to um, these things, they're your standard quarter inch number 20s. So it's kind of interesting. I, I thought everything was quarter inch number 20s, but it wasn't. Oh well, a learning experience. Another thing I should mention is if you're worried about the aluminum plate adding weight, it does. It adds about a half a kilogram or maybe a little over a pound to the uh, system. 
So I had I was kind of worried about that, but I, after running it on several occasions now, it it didn't really affect it at all. And this, as I said, is really secure down here, and I'm very happy with it. All right, so why did I build this thing in the first place? Why didn't I just uh, design it and just have it mounted right to the skull? Well, sometimes I've got to go to a different part of the yard because that my astronomy shed is not in the most ideal location and my field of view is not great. In fact, even going to another part of the yard, it's not great. Sometimes I even have to go off-site. I go figure for astronomy. Whatever. I live in a forest. So I had to devise something where this thing will come off easily, but it won't be too much fanfare to put back together again. And that's what this thing uh, does. I'll try to demonstrate that in a... Well, hello everybody. I'm in a different shirt because this is the next day because I had to remake this portion of the video. So the rest of my cable management. This is the third time I've done cable management um, and the second time within this year. My last rendition, I had a, a, a cable harness coming up, and that worked out pretty well. But uh, this one works better because I got to keep taking the my scope on, or I may have to take my scope on and off. Anyways, Pegasus gives you four of these wires here that connect up to various power things. For example, the first one right here that connects up to the mount. Uh, the second one, the ZWO, that connects up to the camera. There's a third one that actually connects up to my USB, my powered USB hub. And then there's a fourth open spot. Some other things that are on here, I have the electronic filter wheel, which is connected up to the USB hub. And I have the camera, which is also connected up to the USB hub, of course. And the mount is actually connected up to the USB hub. The auto, gu the auto guide, which I described earlier, is also connected up to the USB hub. And then off the USB hub, there is another uh, USB cable that actually connects up to the computer. So, that's how everything is connected up, and we'll see you in a few minutes. The other thing this power box has, so here's the DC, this is where you, you plugged in, and the cable comes all the way down here. And this is the only converter, the DC converter, that's needed, because I've got it running into from my power. If I was out in the field, I wouldn't need this at all, and this power cord would be just directly connected into your um, battery, your typical astronomy battery. The other thing it has on it has two spots for a dew heater, which I've got, which I'm using. And here's the USB, the PC. This thing connects up to the power, or excuse me, to the USB hub, and the USB hub is actually um, connected into the computer. Uh, what else do I have on here? Oh, there's one other thing. It's a sensor. This is for a temperature sensor, which I don't really need it. I, you could if you want. And if you have a DSLR camera, that would connect right into here. So it actually comes with a DSLR um, uh, slot. You might mention, might wonder, remember I was mentioning why I had to get a new um, USB hub? Well, the connections that Pegasus gave us, these, these are all... Uh, two point. Let me show you what they look like. These are all two point one millimeter connections, and my original USB hub had a two point five millimeter connection, which is also a common connection. So I, I contacted Pegasus uh, and Evans from Pegasus uh, promptly emailed me back and said, "Yeah, I, we you just need. They have adapters for this." Or he just recommended getting this uh, StarTech um, hub, and, and I, I'm really, really happy with this StarTech hub. The, it lights up. It, um, as I said, it has the right connections, and it came with these mounting brackets, and it's all metal, which is much better than the one I used to have. All right, so I mentioned that the uh, power box has a USB connection, and does that mean you? Can run it on the computer and it sure does. Here is, in fact, over here, I've got the, uh, let's see if I can plug it on. There is the uh, little screen that the power box gives you, and you can control your, your dew heaters with that right here. But does that mean you actually have to use this with the computer? And the answer is no. As long as you press auto dew, it'll remember your dew heater temperatures, even if you don't 
aren't using the power box. So you don't, what I mean by that is you don't, I'm going to turn it off right now. I'm going to exit here. What that means is you don't need to have this, the power box uh, running on the computer. Yeah, it, it's a standalone uh, device. Okay, you might be wondering, wondering whether it works with other programs too. And here's the astrophotography tool. This is my my imaging software program and telescope control, which I love. Uh, but I've been running both of them at the same time. I usually just minimize this thing after I get it running. And I uh, just use astrophotography tool and there's no connection errors that I have with either one, using either one of these at the same time. And fa um, but it, when I first started using the power box, I didn't really, I didn't even use the, uh, I used it, I just kept it off all the time. But now I turn it on, so anyways. Okay, I also recommend uh, putting labels on all your little wires. So uh, even uh, right where the wire connects into the uh, apparatus, I put it definitely on the USB hub where it goes in. So it's on, it's on, not only is it on the wires, uh, here it's on the label on the wires somewhere. Sorry, I'm trying to show you where the label is either there or it's on the contain, uh, on the wire itself or, and I got another label uh, right on the USB hub. And I've also got it on the other side where it connects into. So I got my Zeb 1600. I've got a label on the electronic filter wheel. I've got one on the mount, although you really can't see it way over here. I've got one where it's connecting into the USB hub. Each one of these wires is labeled. Hello, this one. Oh, here it is. I got it over here. So Sean Maloney uh, recommended this. He's the uh, cable guru, I guess, the wiring harness guru for uh, astrophotography. Okay, last thing I'm going to demonstrate is I'm going to take this uh, thing off and show you how easy it is, or how easy I think it is. Uh, first thing i got to do is I've got to take the um, this off. This is a power wire. This has to come off, and then I'll just feed it through there, and that comes off. Okay, the next thing i do is take this wire off, and this is actually for my mount. So it's got screws there. Alright, that's for the hand controller. I will put my different hand controller when I use the Atlas mount. That's what I use. I would use the Atlas mount into a different location. And the last thing is, this wire right here is actually the, uh, goes to the computer. So I can either disconnect it here, comes up to, comes up to here, and just, uh, I'm sorry, here we go. Anyways. So I'll disconnect those three wires, and these things just come on out of there. And, and I'm just gonna disconnect the scope, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, I'm back. So as I just uh, refresh your memory, I just disconnected the, the mount and the power cord. I'm gonna put that to the side. I disconnected this, uh, the mount. This was for the, um, the hand controller. And I disconnected the USB, uh, connection that goes to the computer and that comes all the way up to this uh, this uh, USB hub. So now it's totally disconnected Oops. and all the rest of the wires are going to stay because I'm just actually taking this, um, I would, would have, this is for relocating to a different part of my yard. So all I have to do is disconnect this and it just comes right off and there it is. All right, so I'd already have my Atlas mount set up somewhere else, and I would just carry this out and attach it. Now, I can do it back. Let's pretend I walked out to the Atlas mount. Okay. Screw this in. Okay, well you might be wondering how do I know how to, um, where exactly to center the weight. I actually got little little markers on here. I got some piece of tape on the, uh, on the scope itself if I have to take the cradle off. And I've got a little marker right over on the uh, dovetail plate to tell me 
how far I have to center it. Anyways, well, that's all I have for you. I hope this helps. Um, there's other videos. I think uh, Galactic Hunter has a good video on how to use this Pegasus Power Pocket Pocket Power Box as well. And uh, anyways, that's my whole setup. My latest one for the cable management as well. We'll see you later. Bye.